What's up guys, I have gotten a request to do an auto top off, a DIY auto top off. I've done them in the past and um, I did it with a relay similar to this. This is um, a relay for an HVAC unit. Um, so um, I'm in the HVAC field so these are easy to come by for me. Um, not realizing that it's a little bit harder for um, others to come by these regularly. So what I wanted to do was make an auto top off. I built one of these before and just didn't video it, but I wanted to make an auto top off using a relay from Radio Shack to show you guys how to do it for, with uh, one of these relays here. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, the things you're going to need are going to be a soldering iron, some heat shrink tubing, float switch. I got five switches here. We only need one. Um, an old step down transformer. Um, this is going to be to uh, activate your relay, the coil on the uh, relay. Um, solder, of course. Uh, these help out a lot um, in soldering wire, but this is an optional thing. It just helps me out. Um, and then, if you want um, a female adapter for your plug, uh, for your pump, that way you don't have to cut your plug pump or your your pump's plug off and uh, solder it into this whole mix here. And then um, an old extension cord for some wire um, for the pump. Actually, this is the one I'm going to use for the pump wire. And then this I'm going to be using for uh, um, lengthening the float switch wire to the relay. So let's go ahead and get going on this. And I'll try to be as detailed as I possibly can. We try to this tripod really, really close. Uh, I'm going to have to stop the video right now uh, so I can plug my soldering iron in and get it warmed up. Come back at you. All right, we're back. I kind of started to uh, strip my wires down and um, stuff like that. Um, soldering iron is heated up. I'm going to actually use some super glue. And I'm going to super glue the relay onto my transformer here. And I want to give you a look. Actually, we'll get to that here in just a minute. Do this part first. A little bit of silicone. Silicone. <laughs> super glue. Right there. It. What we can do now is we can start wiring up our. Uh, I'm gonna cut this piece off here. What we're gonna do is solder one of these wires directly to one of our coils, coil wires. And that's what I wanted to bring up with you guys here is looking at the schematic here. You can see that, let me see if I can do it. This pin, whoops, this top pin and this bottom pin are the coil. This is the common and this is the normally closed and normally open contact. So we're right now we're going to be working on the coil, which is going to be we're looking at the thing here, the relay. You can see we got a coil pin, a coil pin. Let's see if that'll focus. And then this one right here in the middle is our common. We got our normally closed and our normally open. So we're going to be working with this pin and this pin right now. We're setting up our low voltage side, which is going to be essentially our uh, float switch.
got power going into our relay. Oop, watch out, dog. And then power coming out of our transformer on this one, following this entire wire path here through the float switch, which let's get to the float switch here. Traveling to the float switch, going in the float switch, and then coming out the float switch on this wire, which we're going to put an extension wire to come up to the other part of this coil here. So the float switch is going to be energized by the 24 volts on this uh, transformer. So when the float switch is up like this, the uh, coil will be de-energized. And then when the float drops, it'll energize, closing the contact, oh, excuse me, which will turn on our pump, which we'll get to that here in just a minute. So let me finish this part and get my second wire. So now we have our low voltage side all hooked up, and I'll show you here. Once I get this tangled mess all done here, I'll show you so you can hear the relay click in here. If you listen carefully, I'm going to plug it in right now. Right now, there's no high voltage hooked up to it, so. so take you off the tripod here. Here you go, we're plugged in here and you can see that right now the float switch would be what would be the normally filled position in your water, your water and your sump. So say we're all the way filled up and then the water level drops. You hear that click. The relay is clicking right now as the float switch changes state. All right. Okay. So just to recap, we got power going into our relay straight from the transformer. Power coming through the relay coil, basically. Following one wire going all the way, <laughs> all the way to the float switch. And then as it goes into the float switch, it comes out on the other wire and completing the circuit on the other side of the coil on this one. So there is our float switch assembly there. We're done with that. Now we're going to work on our high voltage, which is going to be wiring in this plug here. Now we're going to wire in our high voltage and I'm going to be using this plug still to plug into the wall and then I'm going to be using, um, well actually I'm going to be cutting this off and putting this on so I can plug a pump into it. And we're only going to be splicing into one wire on this to go through the relay. And we want to switch the hot side of the wire. Um, so basically when you plug it into the wall the uh, right side, not always, is going to be your hot, but when you're looking at a receptacle, I just plug this, unplug something here. When you're looking at a receptacle, this smaller one of these slots here, so this one here is your hot side. So when you're looking at this plug, just like this, you're going to see that that right side here is going to be our hot side. So that's the side that we want to place. Um, going through this coil or this uh, relay switch. As I jump forward just a little bit, not far at all, um, what I did is I was able to trace uh, my black wire here as the hot wire, which is typical, but in extension cords, it's, it's kind of tricky. So did the continuity chest check and uh, was able to confirm that the uh, black wire is our hot wire. So what I did is up near the top of the cord there a little bit here, I um, used the razor blade and I was able to pull the black wire out and I stripped it because we're going to be using this little piece of wire here to uh, jump out of the extension cord to go through our relay and come back out of our relay. Okay, so 
I got my uh, jumper wires here um, spliced into the line and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going from on the relay we're going to be going from the, the uh, common pin here in the middle and we're going to be going to the uh, normally open contact on the relay why we're going to go to the normally open contact on the relay is because this uh, schematic shows the relay in its de-energized state so you can see there the uh, relay the switch is on the normally closed when it's in its de-energized state now when that float switch drops and the coil energizes when the coil energizes it's going to flip the switch up to the normally open which is going to turn our pump on so I'm going to solder that in right now so from my plug we're going to go to common finished up the cords are really long but um that's fine with me um i could have really shortened this one up here the high voltage for the pump put the plug on because the pumps usually got their own cords it's pretty long but um i'm just gonna go with this and then i made the low voltage wires for the float switch really really long um to accommodate me going around my sump and stuff but we spliced out again we spliced out of the wire with our hot wire to go through our switch it goes into the common and comes out on the normally open and then through our plug and then these two on the end again are our coil to energize our coil coil is powered well controlled by our switch and energized by this step down transformer so I hope this guy this helped you guys and I'll show you this thing in operation right now alright guys got it all plugged in there to the wall yes it does take up two plugs you could essentially wire the step down transformer into this plug or vice versa but I didn't feel like getting into all that you can see here and I do have a plug pumped into it here and it's one of these pumps down in here I don't know which one it is and Here's our float switch, which would normally be in the sump like this. So this is our normal water level. And then when we drop our water level, listen. There we go. So that's it in operation, guys. There's only, I think that's a 16 volt transformer. Only 16 volts running through this float switch, as opposed to a lot of people splice the float switch directly into an extension cord with the pump, which is a bad idea putting 120 volts through this float switch, which is going to be in contact with your water probably on an unprotected circuit which is going to cause you a house fire and also electrify your water killing all your wet pets so alright guys I hope you enjoyed this one if you have any questions I will love to answer them so uh, alright later